Mario isn't just the most well-known Nintendo character ever and the star of his self-titled gaming series, but he's featured in almost every Nintendo spin-off game, from Mario Kart to Mario Tennis. This list of Mario appearances of course include every single Super Smash Bros. title as well. In Smash 64, Mario falls in mid-tier as one of the weaker characters in the game. This trend continues in Melee, where Mario falls into E-tier and the plumber finds himself even deeper down the pipe in Brawl, where he's actually bottom tier. Mario was designed to be an all-around fighter, essentially a jack of all trades but master of none. But from 64 to Brawl, this was taken too far towards the negatives. In those games, Mario doesn't even have a standout combo game, he lacks kill power, and his consistent issue of range proved to be a brutal weakness. Smash 4 completely reinvented Mario, however. Changes to his down throw, up throw, and aerials made Mario a combo master in Smash 4, racking up tons of damage in almost any exchange, especially with platforms available. In addition to the combo buffs, Mario's smash attacks are buffed up quite a bit. His forward smash could kill some characters as low as 60% when sweet spotted, which was aided by a decent frame advantage on shield and a tricky pullback on his startup animation. Mario's up smash in Smash 4 became an amazing KO tool that he can use in so many situations. It was strong enough to kill most characters at 120% and its intangibility frames made it excellent for anti-airing, with punishing and even approaching. Smash Ultimate carried over most of the changes made in Smash 4 with a few buffs and a few nerfs that could leave the character in a similar position in this metagame. That being said, Mario's tournament results have lowered compared to Smash 4, but a recent upset has drawn much more attention to the cap wearing combo king. Before we get into that, we need to let you know about our website, ProGuides.com. We have tons of content dedicated to your favorite competitive games, and our Smash section is no exception. We've got multiple courses to teach you everything about this game, leading up to our exclusive pro courses taught by players like MKLeo. You can even get yourself a coach via our Play of the Pros feature, so check out ProGuides.com today. The setting was Frostbite 2020, Day 2 in Detroit, Michigan. The world's best player, MKLeo was tearing his way through the winner's bracket when he found himself matched up against Prodigy, a 15-year-old Mario player from Sacramento, California. Prodigy is certainly no slouch, having taken sets off of many PGR players prior to this one, but he had yet to do anything spectacular, and he was always seen in the shadow of Dark Wizzy, who's regarded as the best Mario player. Game 1 started the set with a bang as Prodigy scored a two-stock victory on MKLeo's Joker, ending the game with one of Mario's trademark ladder combos. This wouldn't be the first time Leo has dropped Game 1 in an early round and still adapted to dominate the opponent in the rest of the set, but Prodigy went on to win Game 2 with yet another two-stock. Given Leo's extreme clutch factor, few of us were counting him out at this point, but Prodigy and his Mario had already proven that they were here to make a statement. As Leo brought Game 3 to a last stock situation, we could foresee glimpses of the Game 4 Leo that always bring back victories from the clutches of defeat, but Prodigy swiftly eradicated those visions, ending the set with a devastating combo into Mario's forward air spike, literally sending Leo down into the loser's bracket. This upset was huge for many reasons. Obviously, MKLeo is definitely the best player in the world at this time, so beating him is an impressive feat for anyone, but for Prodigy, this was much bigger than any win he had achieved so far. Going even further, MKLeo frequently trains with Dark Wizzy, who is considered a better Mario player than Prodigy, yet Wizzy was defeated by Leo at the same event. Leo clearly has tons of experience in this matchup, yet Prodigy was still able to secure a 3-0 victory. So is Prodigy just living up to his name, or is Mario secretly a top tier character? Well, Prodigy played the set fantastically, and he's definitely a player to keep your eyes on, but truthfully, even players like Leo need a top tier character to get such amazing results consistently. Mario has many incredible strengths in Ultimate, and we're gonna get into them right now. First up, combos. Mario's combos are most likely his greatest strength, and they're also among the best combos in the game. Starting at low percents, Mario can tack on over 30 damage with an extremely consistent combo starting off from up throw to down air, followed by up B or up air. At around 30 is where Mario's combos shine the most. From here, Mario can link multiple up airs and back airs, taking the opponent to around 70% in most cases, even without platforms. He can set up these combos with, well, the majority of his entire moveset. Down throw, rising up air, falling up air, down air, down tilt, up tilt. Mario will typically turn any stray hit into a long combo in his percentage range. Taking 50 to 70 damage from a combo is brutal enough, but there are two specific combos that make Mario insane. Mario's up B was actually buffed from Smash 4, with the last hit dealing more knockback. It still isn't very strong, but if Mario manages to carry you close enough to the top blast zone, this move will KO very early. All he needs is one platform, and Mario can turn his classic up air ladders into a kill confirm with an up B off the top. With Rage, this kills even earlier, and if you for some reason don't ban both triplat stages, he'll have so many routes to carry you off to the top. 
The stage factor is pretty significant, actually. Although Mario's combos are still very strong on Final Destination, he'll always be able to ban it, along with Kalos or Town, leaving platforms on every available stage. This latter combo makes Mario one of the only characters that can actually true combo you into a KO from such early percents. Like in this example where Prodigy grabs Leia at 35% then proceeds to take his stock. Mario has another, much simpler way to take your stock from one hit at low percent, though. At around 40-50%, to 50 Mario can combo a down throw into rising up air or falling nair or up air which sets up into a forward air spike. While this combo requires Mario to start near the ledge, it's another inescapable kill combo that works under 50%. In this set winning sequence, Prodigy lands a grab at 27%, attempts to set up into fair on the left, and has time to frame trap Leo's air dodge with a grab at 41 leading into a true combo to the fair on the right side of the stage. Even with crazy combos, not every character can frame trap like this, and this is thanks to Mario's amazing frame data, another one of his huge strengths. Overall, you can argue that he has the best frame data in the game. With a frame 2 jab and a frame 3 nair, he has a super quick get off me option in every situation, and nair also starts combos. His tilts all come out on frame 5 and are either safe on shield, start combos, or both. Mario's aerials not only come out blazing fast, but they have such low cooldown that he could perform many combinations of two attacks in one short hop. His nair and back air are both minus two on shield, meaning that he can shield before any out of shield option and spot dodge before any grab after hitting a shield with these attacks. Back air is frame six, down air is frame five, and up air is frame four, so all of Mario's aerials come out more or less instantly and fair spikes, so it's allowed to be slow. These fast aerials work great out of shield, but that's not all. Mario has a frame 6 grab which is tied up for the fastest in the game, so he can punish so many attacks with the best grab combo for starters. Mario's up B comes out in frame 3, making it among the fastest of out of shield options in the game, and at frame 9, his up smash forces opponents to constantly respect the space above and behind him at kill percents. Mario also has great mobility. His run speed isn't exactly fast, but it's above average, and his airspeed and acceleration are also quite solid, giving him the ability to mix up his air drift and ground position effectively. Despite being a very easy to pick up character, Mario also has some very unique special moves that allow him to deal with many situations. His down B, Flood, is a chargeable water attack that pushes opponents away with no damage or hit stun. This is typically used to obliterate high recoveries as it pushes opponents back without knocking them out of states like freefall, but it also works as a great way to take stage control or turn juggles into edge guards. Cape, Mario's side B can reflect projectiles, and it's one of the only moves in the game that temporarily inverts a player's horizontal inputs. This is particularly strong against recoveries with any kind of horizontal trajectory, as it will reverse the opponent and send them towards the blast zone. Fireball isn't a particularly unique projectile, but its slow moving nature allows Mario to follow behind it and potentially follow up or get a grab. Fireball also lets Mario slow down the pace of the game and pressure opponents from a safe distance. With all of these strengths, Mario is not without his weaknesses. Most notably, he lacks range which can give him difficulties against characters with large disjoints. When interviewed after his set of Prodigy, MKLeo even said he was planning to try Byleth if he had another chance to fight against Prodigy. Although Mario does struggle to get in against long range characters, they'll still have a hard time pressuring him without getting whiff punished thanks to his amazing frame data. Also, most characters with long range tend to have poor disadvantage states and lack combo breakers, so even if Mario can't get in so easily, he doesn't have to do so very often to get great results. Speaking of results, this time in terms of tournament wins, Mario doesn't have the greatest record. Since his results are much more prominent in Smash 4, this leads many to conclude that Mario was simply a better character in that game. Looking closer however, the best Mario mains from Smash 4 have either dropped the character or don't compete often, and Dark Wizzy's results of Mario have actually improved in Ultimate. So is Mario top tier? Well judging tiers can be very arbitrary, but Mario does have all the makings of an amazing character. He has insane damage output coming from consistent true combos, multiple ways to KO opponents under 50%, and some of the best frame data in the entire game. Mario also has a decent matchup spread along other top tiers, doing well against Joker, Pikachu, and Mr. Game & Watch. Prodigy's win is sure to inspire more players to pick up the plumber in red, and has raised general awareness to the strength of the character in top level play. What do you think of Mario and Smash Ultimate? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for more from Pro Guides.